Welcome to Cork Module 3, the interpretation and use of outcome data in child and youth mental health. This module is approximately 10 minutes long. My name is Sally Marriott and I'm a Cork Regional Officer. I'm delighted to be delivering this module of the Cork Online Training Programme. I have a background in business improvement and transformation and I've been with Cork since 2014. Since then I've developed and delivered numerous Cork trainings and I've supported many organisations across the UK to interpret their child and youth data and I look forward to helping you learn more on this topic today. Can you think of a time when outcome information from your service was presented to you? Maybe you were hearing it at a team meeting or a management meeting. Maybe you were discussing it with a commissioner. Perhaps you saw some tidy graphs or tables like this or this. It can look quite clean cut in these graphs and there may be a tendency to draw immediate conclusions based on the information they yield. But the reality is that child and youth mental health data is messy and complex, giving good reason to be particularly thoughtful about how we interpret and use this information. Whilst Cork acknowledged that there are uncertainties with these data, we also believe that this is unlikely to change in the near future. And so understanding the strengths and limitations up front will help to give way to better conversations around the implications of what the data is telling us and help to identify service improvements. This module is dedicated to offering practical tips for facilitating these discussions and helping you ask the right questions when exploring the data. To begin with, let's get practical with some considerations for facilitating these discussions. the right people in the room including funders, data leads, frontline staff, strategic staff and where possible representation of the service user voice. These will all bring different perspectives to the conversation, i.e. data leads may be more cautious about the limitations of the data. Frontline staff can add detail and richness to the stories underpinning the data while strategic leads can offer insight into wider population factors that may be influencing trends. Service users may offer reflection on strengths and limitations of the tool being used such as whether it asks the right questions on areas they feel are important. Set ground rules for the conversation to make it a safe space for encouraging curiosity and critical thinking, no point scoring or punitive discussions. Know the measurement tools being used. Whilst this seems obvious to practitioners using them on a daily basis, some people in the room who are being presented with the information may have little experience or knowledge of the tool being used to generate the results. Therefore, understanding what type of outcome the measurement tool focuses on, such as young people's goals, their functioning or their symptoms is helpful, as well as knowing what does good or bad look like, this questionnaire, and how a score is calculated. Does an increase in the score mean the young person is coping better than before, or does it mean they are experiencing more difficulties? Is the total score made up of several subscales, i.e. different underlying difficulties, and so the level of severity is being pushed up by one area of difficulty in particular. Is the tool a good fit in terms of the appropriateness for your target group, such as literacy or language barriers they may be experiencing when completing? Or is it sensitive enough to change for the period of time your intervention is taking place over? Allocate time to exploring the data, but dedicate the majority of time to discussing what the implications mean for your service. We recommend a 25-75% split in favour of the latter and have an agreed process for making a decision on next steps, however imperfect the process may be. For example, agreeing areas that warrant more of a deep dive and triangulation of other data and who's responsible for gathering and presenting next time. Make the reporting back of actions a set agenda item for every meeting. To help facilitate the conversation around exploring the strengths and limitations of the data itself, Cork recommend asking the following questions. How representative is the data? Rarely will a service hold complete data for 100% of their cases. Complete data referring to paired outcome measurement tools being collected at at least two time points. But these missing data will ultimately skew the results and make them less representative. It may be that those who are more engaged in getting more from the service stay until the end and complete a second time point measure, thus making the results overly positive. Or it could be the opposite and those who quickly improve stop coming and do not complete a second time point 
and so positive outcomes are underestimated. This is particularly meaningful when thinking about key subgroups in the data. For example, your data set may contain a disproportionate split between male or female respondents, be predominantly white British, or not capture a good cross-section of the age groups you work with. Whose perspectives have been captured? The data being presented may have been collected from different stakeholders in the intervention, from the child themselves, their parent or carer, teacher or the practitioner. Each one of these stakeholders offer a different perspective to the work and it's important to remember that everyone may see different things and see things differently. Because of these very different and subjective viewpoints, it's important that each contributor is kept separate and that results are not grouped together into one overall score for that child. Keeping the perspective separate helps to identify where the work may be having more or less of an impact overall. For example, children may be showing signs of feeling less stressed or anxious at school, but the problem has been displaced to the home environment and parents are observing heightened difficulties. By seeing these opposing results, decisions can then be made on how best to support parents with the transition or change the work to have a more balanced effect. How has the data been cut? It must be ensured that the data is being viewed at the right level. If the figures being presented bring together many teams or projects to give a whole service result, such as an average change score, there is a risk that this may have been flattened by too many competing results. Therefore, looking at results by team, intervention or project, level of severity or need, or even by key demographics could be more enlightening. For example, there may be two types of work happening within one team. Work focused on recovery, i.e. the outcome is to see improvement and thus a bigger positive change score is better. Or work focused on relapse prevention, i.e. the outcome is to maintain current levels of mental health and so minimal fluctuations in total scores, thus yielding flat change scores, is desired. If both of these type of work had the change scores lumped together, the relapse prevention work would flatten out the recovery change scores leading to the incorrect interpretation that the recovery work isn't making much difference. In this example, viewing the data at the level of income and need or by the separate types of work would be more appropriate. Cutting data into demographic or key characteristic groupings will allow for identification of potential disadvantages or advantages certain groups have in achieving better outcomes. For example, if girls are achieving better outcomes than boys, can adjustments be made to delivery for boys? It's important to note that the more data is cut, the smaller the subsamples become and small numbers can limit statistical inference. We would like to acknowledge the benefits of comparator data in interpreting the information being presented. Comparators allow for benchmarking and to contextualise results against what is normal, expected or within reasonable parameters. You may be able to source this from data repositories, such as the Mental Health Services dataset held by NHS Digital, or by receiving a Cork report where we present your services results against our data set, currently the largest of its kind in the country. There will also be published articles and reports about outcomes seen in particular research programmes and evaluations, such as the National Lottery Community Funds programme, Head Start. There may be a large evidence base for that specific intervention and so research might cite expected effect sizes or levels of impact to lend comparison against. Or the measurement tool itself may have published research which details what clinical or reliable change scores would be for that particular scale. The fundamental purpose of collecting these data and presenting them as an aggregated report is to identify successes and challenges that are occurring in service delivery and to adopt a continuous improvement approach. Therefore, the majority of the discussion should be dedicated to discussing the implications of the data. Some questions to answer are, what does this data tell us about what is happening in our service? Is the service intervention or project having an impact on children and young people, and to what degree? Is this more or less of an impact than what was expected? Are some subgroups seeing bigger improvements than others? Is there anything occurring that wasn't anticipated? Secondly, and arguably most importantly, what needs to be improved? Are there changes to direct delivery that need to happen straight away or over time? 
followed by how can we do this and finally how will we know when this has been achieved. Having the right people in the room to answer these questions will result in realistic and informed decisions, managing the expectations across all stakeholders. Finally, Cork champion openly sharing and learning from the data so as we can continue to combat the challenges posed by its complexity and uncertainty as a community. Open communication about how the data has been used is so important. It's good practice to feedback results to those who provided and collected the data and any actions being taken on the back of them. Seeing the information being considered and meaningfully used incentivizes people to engage in the whole process of routine outcome monitoring and this will ultimately improve quality and quantity. Celebrate successes that the data highlights, but also remain open, honest and curious about the challenges it may unearth. We are now at the end of Court Module 3, the interpretation and use of outcome data in child and youth mental health. We hope that you've enjoyed gaining knowledge and understanding of the three objectives. Thank you for listening and please do check out our other online training modules which can be found by returning to the online training and resources area of our website. If you do have any questions relating to this topic you can get in touch by any of the methods listed here. Cork would be delighted to support further thinking and discussions on the interpretation and use of outcome data in your service. As a learning organisation we always appreciate feedback so do tell us how you found this module. A link to an online feedback form is available beneath this video link on our webpage. And please do follow us on Twitter and join our network.